This is part 14 of rebuilding a large old twin cylinder steam engine. This engine was in a terrible state before I pulled it apart, and the more I pulled it apart, the worse it looked. And as I've mentioned before, as it's meant to be a restoration, I really didn't want to make new parts just for the sake of it. I only made new parts if the existing ones were totally unserviceable. Here is the crankshaft with the connecting rods connected to it and as you can see it turns quite freely and that's with the pistons in the bores as you can see here. I spent considerable time getting the position of the pistons correct. I wanted both of the pistons to move up and down in the cylinders by the same amount. If you have the pistons incorrectly positioned in the cylinder then you will get uneven beats from the exhaust. Steam engines generally use double acting cylinders like these, so effectively it's a four cylinder engine. But unfortunately, in one of the cylinders there is a piston rod, and as the volume of steam is slightly less than the other side of the cylinder, it makes a different noise as it exhausts. What you're looking at at the moment on the video is me dithering about with a pair of surgical calipers and a very small split pin which has to go through this hole and trying to watch the camera at the same time. Most of the time when you watch these videos, it looks quite swish and very professional, that's the plan. It does not show me dropping things on the floor and doing things wrong. Time for a bit of a play now. By partially blocking off one of the inlet ports with my thumb, I can apply compressed air to one side of the piston. This is not much compressed air and the piston moves very freely, so that's okay. I think I can say that the connecting rods, the big ends, the small ends, the pistons and the main bearings are fine. Time now to move on to these horrendous steam chests. These are really badly made. Positively frightening. But if I make new ones, it's counterproductive because it's not the original engine. I've already remachined the glands at the bottom of the steam chest. The steam chests are all going to be painted anyway, so I will be able to tidy them up. Here's a good tip, when you make gaskets do not cut them too small to start with because if you make them too frail they will possibly break when you fit them. The best way to do is to make them oversize and then using a knife very carefully, don't put much pressure on, trim the gasket to its final shape as I'm showing here. Do not try and cut the gasket in one sweeping movement because if the knife slips you will either cut yourself or mark the engine, whichever is worse. This craft knife is not very sharp, it spends a lot of time on the bench and I use it for all sorts of jobs, but after quite a few passes with the knife, the surplus gasket material comes away quite easily. It's also essential to trim the gasket on the inside of the valve chest, because if any of the gasket material fouls the valve, the valve will not admit and exhaust the steam properly. In the next video of the series, I will be showing how I fit the valve gear. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.